Let me know when I... We're on. We're on. Okay. <laughs> and this is Ham Radio Now. The most important amateur radio program on the internet. And it's important to say television program because there's something else important on the internet. Are you probably getting the idea from the title that's sitting there below me? That is also important, but it's not a program. So, um... Let's see. I'm Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. Ham Radio Now is brought to you by you. If you enjoy the program, it is free to watch, not free to make. HamRadioNow.tv is the place to go. Click the pig. Arvin's been sitting over there on the uh, table in front of me, and people have been stuffing money into him, which has uh, been awesome. So, thank you, guys. Okay, so um, episode 389, the Zed. The Zed himself came down here and sat across the table from me. And you are Fred Lloyd, AA7BQ. Welcome to Ham Radio Now. Again, I think this may be the first time you've ever been on the show. Uh, it's possible, yeah. yeah Come right up on that mic. It's uh, <clears throat> high signal to noise here. Okay, well, thank you, Gary. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. This is my second time coming out to the Orlando Hamcation, and it's one of my favorite ham fests. I've, I've been to dozens and dozens of major ham fests most all of them actually in the united states uh this is one of the, my top ham fests that i love to attend and uh this one's certainly grown quite a bit since the last time i was here it's very impressive how long has it been it's been about uh five or six years i'd say since i was okay. last here and this may be this may be the place that i saw you i don't know i remember sitting in your uh, rv yeah. Wishing I had a camera with me, as, as you were telling me all about the history of, you know, starting QRZ from back on a, on a CD. Yeah. Uh, started it from a from a tape, actually. Uh, a tape I got from the federal government with the call sign database on it. And uh, uh, Hey, have you, got, have you got a second? Hey, come Michael. On in, come on in, Michael, just for a second. Just for a second. Sit right over there. Michael Coulter from, uh, uh, from the Dayton Hamvention is... Uh, is here. We were talking in the hall a couple minutes ago, and uh, he's got to go. But you know, put on those headphones and uh, slide right up to the mic. Oh, he's putting on sunglasses. He must have had a night of heavy drinking last night. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I do have. I have eye. I have eye trouble. Okay. And eye surgery. Yep. All right. Put on the phones. Slide up to the mic. I think the number two volume control is yours if you want to adjust it. So this is a test. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, one, two. Oh, one, two. There you one, go. One, two. Okay. One, two. <laughs> we got you on the show. So you got to hurry. So we will get the the Dayton Hamvention stuff in real quick. Um, no new building this year, but there will be for next year. But you've also got the um, the the furniture mart building. Go ahead and tell me what that is. Yeah, that's about 7,500 square feet, and it's right there in the, in the campus area with all the other buildings, and we, uh, we're excited to get that. You know, we had all the approvals and everything done to get the new building, but then we found out from the contractor we couldn't get the building materials in time. So we, <clears throat> we decided, we asked them, don't start that building until after our event, and they've agreed. And that way, uh, we'll have it for next year for Hamvention 19. All right. And uh, a little more work out in the parking lot. That's right. We, we're working with the uh, county engineers, working with, um, um, of course, the uh, city of Xenia and Xenia Township. All these government entities are working together with us. But the county engineer, I think, is taking the lead to design how that's going to happen. Um, the, uh, the flea market area, actually, believe it or not, is pretty well drained. But uh, we just got inundated with so much rain, it couldn't handle it. And um, You got a monster. So, so, yeah, we did. We had a, had, a, had, a, had a pretty bad one. But, you know, we're hams. We take a, take a slamming, and we keep on hamming. So, Fred, Fred, feel free to join in and talk and ask oh, questions. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Fred. Well, I, I, uh, I've been invited to attend this year's hamvention and, uh, <laughs> and uh, perhaps conduct a forum. And we're, we're trying to put that together. There's no promises just yet, but... Uh, it's uh, starting to look pretty favorable, so I might be coming out there. It's favorable for me because I just really love uh, the Hamvention to begin with. Everybody does. I love meeting all the fans of QRZ, and uh, you know, it's 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 a great place for me to go in the summertime. All right. So, without um, the addition of the uh, the old furniture building, will add some space, but it won't it won't uh, make up for what was missing from the tents. So you're still going to do tents. Yeah, we'll probably have. 
one large tent, and, and, um, and we really regret that having to happen. And uh, who knows, we may get the new building, and plus the uh, uh, built, and then we still have the uh, furniture store, uh, it will be ours. And uh, we get a lot of demand there. A lot of people want to come, and we're hearing uh, we're hearing from um, lots of people that the hotels are filling up very quickly. But um, I want to got re- my room reserved already. Good, but I want to remind everybody to take a look at uh, thehamvention.org. Stay up with it. Make sure you get your reservations in soon. And I am really excited that Fred's coming. We we <laughs> talked last night, and and uh, we've uh, talked before. He's a uh, quite. You know, he's done an awful lot for amateur radio. The QRZ, I mean, if you're not using the QRZ.com, I, I, it's just a, what a wonderful feature it is. And I'm proud to say that I'm a life member of um, QRZ, and I think more people should, you know, donate to that because I'm sure everybody uses it all the time. So, uh, you know, I support it, and I support what Fred's doing. Good mission, and he's all the time coming up with new things to do. Okay, so it just occurred to me. The concept of life membership at the Dayton Hamvention. You buy in once and you come forever. Well, I'm... Let me <laughs> Fred's ca- chuckling. <laughs> let me calculate that. <laughs> We've not ever ever talked that. Um, right. Your entry fee is... is you know, it's, it's, uh, it's more than the $5... You know, flea market ham fest, but it's not exorbitant. No, I don't think so. We've we've held the price right around there for a long time. We have free busing. I also want to to urge people to use the offsite parking for and take a bus in. The, these bus drivers, I mean, they're natives around there, and a lot of them are entertainers. And <laughs> and I, we did a forum here in Hamcation, and and I asked how many took the buses, and I said, did any of them entertain you? I said, yeah, we were singing on our bus. I mean, how can you get a group of people to sing and and party in about you know fifteen twenty minutes? I, so how, do you, I how, do you, how do you get the uh, how do you get the boat anchors up into the overhead bins? Oh, he's got a plan. Yeah, actually, we do. Um, you know, we, we I was telling Gary about this earlier. <clears throat> What's going to happen? We're going to have a place that you can check in your great big boat anchor or boat anchors if you want, <laughs> and uh, then you get on your bus and go get your car, and then you can come back and drive through. There's like a drive-through area. Just load it up really quick, and uh, we'll have it ticketed there, and you're loaded, load and go. So it makes it a lot easier on the transportation. Nice, yeah. We didn't do that last year, but we heard we heard enough on it. So uh, we want to try to. We're always trying to improve. So, yeah. I, and I want to say while you're here that that well, some things went wrong last year. A lot more went right. Wow. And for moving in within one year from where you were to where you went to is totally different configuration. You guys did an amazing job, and thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. And I also want to, um, a couple more <clears throat> uh, tidbits is that if you came there and you enjoyed the food, it's even going to be better this year. We're working on with the vendors to have a better flow in their in their um, vehicles, is you know their <clears throat> bending vehicles, and then we're bringing in some more vendors, and they will will have some more uh, uh, international foods, and we want to be able to cater to most everybody's taste. And yeah. it's I think that's a, such a step up from what we had at Hera. I mean that was one of our big things. Just have better food, you know, and uh, we got a lot of good comments on that. We're going to change the configuration in the center where the uh, where we had those uh, bleachers up in the center. It was kind of crowded in there. We'll have more picnic tables in there, and we are working on getting uh, some possibly some shade. Uh, can't promise us yet, but we're looking at it to get some shade in between the big buildings out there, and then maybe have the bleachers in there so people can sit out there in the shade. And we also, um, it looks like we're going to have stellar weather there for the event. So, Get look, long-term look. forecast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I promised last year, and that didn't happen so I, good. I, I've so. got a secret to tell people about, about the, uh, the food, um, at least for a couple of the, of the uh, food trucks. They were open on both sides, and everybody lined up on one side. There'd be a line of uh, 20, 30 people on one side of the food trucks, and no one at the other side. But if you walked up to the other side, they would serve you right away. Well, so. now you just blew the secret. Bro. Well, yeah, I know. There sorry. you go, Gary. <laughs> we, we only told you to help you out. You, you didn't know? tell me. I, in fact, my, my friend uh, Jeff told me about that. So. I know. I am, and, and, and I was one of the guys in the line with 30 other people, so I... You know, I wasn't paying attention. Not every truck did that, did it that way, but a couple of them did. Yeah, the food was awesome. And the theme this year is um, 
based around emergency communication. And amateur radio uh, serving the community is basically the theme. But um, with, with so much happening in this country and other parts of the world when it comes to um, uh, the need for good, solid emergency communication, what does that look like? How do we do that? And so we've asked people in their forums if they can work that in to some way what they're talking about. Let's talk about it. Okay. So uh, that's great. So you're going to put your uh, the Dara MCOM truck right in the middle of that uh, plaza then? No, it's a nice MCOM. I mean, it's a beautiful MCOM truck, but no, we're not going to. It's a showcase. <laughs> yeah, but it won't be in the middle. Okay. Not at all. But it would take up. We want that to be a nice flow. It was just, it was, I think just down the road. It was easy yeah, to yeah, find. Yeah, and, yeah, and we'll you, have And it. people can come take a look at and, it. And I want to mention, too, if uh, you're bringing an RV up and you haven't made reservations, you better call now and you, and you call the uh, um, Green County uh, Expo, Fairground and Expo Center. And, um, and if they have any spots, they'll make sure you get it or get on a waiting list. But I'm going to tell you a little secret. Just south of Xenia, Ohio, that's spelled with an X, X-E-N-I-A, there is a great uh, state park there. It's called Caesars Creek State Park. It's a beautiful drive south of Xenia, rolling countryside, maybe seven or eight miles south of Xenia, and it's on a very gorgeous lake, and there's 278 uh, camping spots there with, uh, uh, they have electric. I think they only have uh, 30, uh, 30 amp hookups, yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, the RV on site, did that work pretty well last year? I stayed in it, you know, of course, you know, when you kind of have Fred, a were you in there? like that. I wasn't there last year. Okay. It what? was it was beautiful. Didn't was, go to Xenia year one? I I was I was somewhere else. You're a bad uh, ham. <laughs> no, he's not a bad ham. <laughs> what he was doing, he's a, a modest to tell you this, but he was improving QRZ, keep it going better and better all the time. Yeah. All right, we'll be talking about that in a minute. Okay. One last question. Yes. Uh, you're here at the Orlando Hamcation. Yes. Uh, and you came last year. Have you ever been before? I've been here three or four Okay. times at least um was, was there anything about doing a ham fest in a fairgrounds like this that you learned and then took back to do the setup in a fairgrounds for the for the, oh uh, yeah day? yeah absolutely we learn a lot at every uh, i go to a lot of the uh, big events all throughout the world in uh, tokyo uh Friedrichshafen, down here and other places learn from everybody and i, I i'm going to take a, a a moment to mention that you know we get kind of hit up on don't you think Hamcation is, you know, they're they're not quite as big as you yet, but they're gonna they're gonna hammer catch you. It up. And and I'm I mean we're all happy about that, but you know what people don't realize is how we have all decided. I'm talking about the the people in uh, Tokyo, the people in Germany, the D, you know this DARC folks been there several times. Huntsville and and the uh, general chairman from Huntsville is here. And we all work together. We recognize that we are a, a pillar of amateur radio. Without good ham fests, without successful ham fests, then the vendors aren't selling, then they don't get the money for research to get you know, the new and exciting equipment that will take people to the next level in amateur radio and, and make, make that available, plus a place to come to have you know, the, you know, the eyeball contact and just generally feel good about what you're doing and you meet people like Fred, you know, mm -hmm. and Gary. But we all work together. There's no us against them at all. Uh, I, I'm sorry, the uh, general chairman from the Michigan Speedway is here too and we talked to him. But, but we want to see everybody be successful. So uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> I want to make sure that that's out there. I'm thinking the bigger ham fests have been growing and doing well. Small ham fests, um, your, your local ham fest, they have been struggling. They continue to struggle. Yeah, I I, uh, I don't know what to say about that. Um, you know, part of it's marketing. Part of it is um, it's hard to get volunteers. When you're at a ham fest, they're generally all volunteers, and, and you're a volunteer, right, Gary? Yeah. And so well, I, I I ask for money, but yeah. but, but, but you, and you charge money, but <laughs> but the people working for it don't get paid. I don't get paid at all. None none of us get paid. Six hundred fifty seven volunteers at ham bench. None of us get paid, and. So, and a hamcation, they're volunteers all over the place. And they're standing out in the sun. They're directing traffic. They're doing security. They're helping you get to the forums. Same at any ham, ham, yeah. ham fest. So I would really uh, urge people, thank a volunteer. Thank them. You know, because they're out there and they're, they see a big picture of, of their club and their community supporting amateur radio. And we've got to keep doing that all, all across the board. 
Okay, Fred, you got anything you want to ask, well, ask before we let Michael get going? Oh, Michael, we need a, we need a big ham fest on the West Coast. <laughs> that's what's that's what should be up on the list here. You well, know? let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's do figure it. that out somehow. I like uh, there's an awful lot of us, you know, in California and Arizona, all along the West. Right. And, so so uh, the Pacificons and the CPACs and stuff, they are not uh, in, in this size uh, category? I wish so I, I could, I've never I, been to one. I haven't either, and I, shame on me because I live in Arizona, but uh, uh, maybe that's what I should do first, go to one of those. Yeah, and find out. I mean, they've got reputations, but I, yeah, I don't know how big they are. Yeah. Right. All right, thank you, Michael. I'll let you, right. uh, I'll I'll let you run. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Fred. I wish you uh, and everyone out who might be listening. Um, hey, well, by the way, if you have questions, I'm good on QRZ. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> Best 73 me, me to, to everyone. Thank All you right. for having Thank me. Thank you. Michael Coulter, WHCI. Uh, pub- what's your official title? Publicity guy? I am the uh, official spokesperson, board member, and also the uh, financial officer. I'm former general chair of the of Hambenchen, and I've kind of stayed with him, and I work with the leaders, well, am part of the leadership of the yeah. group. So I'll, I'll declare you the face of the Dayton Hambenchen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I get stopped all the time. I've been doing this for so many years that, you know, it's... but. But I'm I'm grateful and thankful to do it. All anyway, right. I do need to. I got to catch an airplane. Congratulations, Mike. You've done a great job, by the way. Well, it's a, it's, it's our team, but thank you. Good. Good. And I'll great see to you. Great to be with you, Fred. I'll, I'll see you at the world famous Green County Ham Fest. <laughs> yeah. Not it's a good. Ham Fest, Ham Vention. Ham Vention. Yeah. Okay. Ham Vention. Okay. Uh, and now, back to what was it? Oh, I remember what we were doing. We we're doing the Z. And uh, let me get your. Uh, and get your camera re reoriented to make you the big star. So sorry about you know Michael photo bombing, and then we had to bring him in here because he wasn't going to be. Able, I, I yeah. talked to him a little bit. He wasn't going to be able to uh, to do the show, and well, yes, yes, he was, <laughs> and not apparently too reluctantly. So um, what's up with QRZ? What's the deal? I'm good on the Z. Yeah, well, uh, uh, QRZ is is as strong as ever. Uh, our membership is still growing. How um, big is it? Uh, well, we have 600,000 registered members, and of those, at least half of them are active on the site. Uh, the others that are inactive are still, they still come around from time to time. Uh, we're still serving about 60,000 unique individuals every day, uh, upwards of a million uh, web pages every day, uh, sometimes as many as uh, 100,000 new QSOs are added to our logbook every day, uh, and with a momentum like that, it's it's uh, its popularity is going to be there. So, um, when I go to QRZ um, dot dot com, which is right here, I look uh, at call, look up call signs, and I look at the news, and those are my primary go-to places. I realize it is huge beyond that, uh, and I don't think we'd have enough time for a guided tour in the time we've got to sit here and talk, but talk about the depth, all the stuff that is there that that people might not go to see if they just go do a quick hit on a call sign. Well, uh, uh, not, not everyone realizes that we have more than 2 million photographs on the site. Yikes. I haven't seen them all. <laughs> Uh, and we have a well, there's an application on the site just to just to page through the photos, nothing but photos of of ham shacks and everything that hams do. Uh, it's quite quite an interesting collection of pictures. Uh, so looking on the site for those that are watching the video, and, and that monitor is kind of in, inconvenient for you. But where would I go to see that? Because it's not right up on the top. Uh, look under database. On the menu there, okay, and uh, there's a, a pick safari at the bottom. Ah, okay. There you go, and and you can see there. I don't know if there's a count there, but uh, it says page one of thousands. <laughs> uh, yeah. you won't get to the end of that. That's for right. sure. And and so that is okay. So it's it is. There's some categories. You got shacks, antennas, radios, animated towers, transceivers. You got things tagged. So there's a way to kind of look through things in a somewhat organized fashion. Right. And as Mostly you, it looks like it's designed for browsing. 
Uh, it is designed for browsing, but we do encourage people to tag things as they see them. In other words, while you're watching it, if you say, oh, that's a, that's a, a specific model of radio that's, uh, you know, you can just add that to the picture, and then it'll come up in the search. So that's how we're, we're populating that. We, no one really can sit and page through all two million of them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try during this show. So okay. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to get there. All right, so I'm just looking at a few. All right, so that's an interesting thing to look for. Uh, but, uh, our know. online swap meet is uh, probably the biggest one in all of ham radio. Uh, okay, so that is right up on the top. Right up on the front page, actually, is where the uh, preview of the swap meet is. Uh, scroll, uh, well, you're not there right now. Well, okay, let's go to the, to the front page. And and, um, and when you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see uh, 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 there it's starting right there, the online swap meet. Okay. Uh, that's just a sample of a few of the things that are there. That that list of pictures on the front page changes continuously. Every 15 minutes, there's going to be new things up there. So these are all radios for sale? Everything or things kits. for sale? Things for sale, that's right. All right. Uh, there's just a tremendous amount of activity on that. And, and we do quite a bit of work in the background uh, to prevent scammers uh, from getting over on people. It's actually, a, we have two volunteers working that do nothing but monitor that swap met. And, and weed out uh, suspicious postings and things like that. That sounds like a lesson learned from some difficult experience sometime in the past. And I don't remember anything in specific, but people have been burned over there a long time ago, right? Well, you know, you can get burned any day of the week, really. Um, and the lesson that we learned was just how important it is. And, and one example in particular, I got an email from uh, the daughter of a 90-year-old uh, ham that had sent a check uh, for a lot of money, a thousand dollars to a P.O. box in, in Brooklyn and was asking me uh, you know, what can he do about it uh, because he never got his radio and, and it's just heartbreaking when you hear something like that, absolutely heartbreaking and so, you know, we've taken measures to, to do our very best uh, to ascertain whether or not it's a legitimate offer or not and we've also taken steps to to verify our uh, users, uh, if they, you know, it's, it's not 100%, but we do our very best to help people decide whether or not it's a legitimate offer. All right. So you can't guarantee that something is going to be good. No. But you have some, some tools in place, but but it's also a, people need to be careful themselves. They do need to be careful, but I'll say this. we Since we've started in the last couple of years, the rate of people complaining about uh, illegitimate uh, dealings has dropped significantly. So it is actually, I believe, a very safe place to shop if you use common sense and caution. All right. I wanted to ask about um, the QSL cards and uh, contact verification and things like that, and maybe even awards, because I've only barely noticed that they exist, but a lot of people seem to be uh, real excited about them. Um, as a, as a, a long-time ham, you know, I've been a ham for like, I'm going into my 53rd year, my, and I've never been a paper chaser, uh, I got a Reg Chewers Club certificate early on, and I've, and I've got a lot of MCOM things, but I've, I've even done worked all states or DXCC, but my impression of awards all came from ARL, DXCC, worked all states, worked all continents, you know, the big three. And QSLing either being done, you know, back in the day, all on paper, and then you, you box them up and you send them to the league, and off they go, and, and you get your reward. Uh, it seems, and, and now they got the logbook of the world, but now it seems like there are alternatives and a sort of a second system with a second tier of awards. And I don't know what if there's any connection between the QSL that you can do on QRZ.com and something that the ARL is going to recognize. So give me a, a short tutorial on, on that. Is it totally separate, or is there a connection now? Well, uh, our logbook is, uh, is tied uh, by the user to LOTW, a logbook of the world. If you have an account on logbook of the world and an account on QRZ, which almost everyone does, that, that, uh, that do logging, uh, there are, we have a facility built into our logbook that says send all your records to LOTW. So you can essentially keep both uh, the, the logs on QRZ and the logs on LOTW, and it goes both ways. It can be fetched from LOTW or it can be sent to LOTW. So one entry gets to both places. Yes, but you have to tell it to go to the other place. Yeah. Okay. And then, how, how difficult is it to make that connection? 
Um, it's it's just a matter of uh, clicking a few buttons on the screen, uh, uh, but you know naturally you do have to pay attention and follow the instructions. <laughs> yeah. LOTW but, has never been simple. Yeah, Logbook of the World, their verification system is. Um, I don't know if, if you because I've never done it because QSLing has never been a thing for me. But uh, it's you know there's a postcard that comes back and forth, and you know you, the verification is is fairly. Um, di- not difficult and not sophisticated. <laughs> Neither of those words applies, but it is, but it works. It, they, they are doing verification, and, and uh, it's well, hard I to think, get around. I think we got to, we have to define what verification means in this context. Uh, uh, there is the CUSO confirmation, and that's when it's that's when a record has been deemed confirmed between two contacts. Uh, and then there's a, the other issue with Logbook of the World is their identity uh, certificates that you present when you upload your files. That's it, it, which of the two are, are you? Referring well, I guess I'm to? talking about just joining up in the first place. Oh, so you have to prove you, that you are who you, who you say you are. Right. Uh, uh, we uh, we simply uh, basically take our members' word for it uh, uh, for the most part. Uh, we haven't had a great deal of problems uh, ever, really, with uh, identity theft when it comes to awards and things of that nature. I mean, there have been hams in the past that have that have uh, uh, impersonated other hams in order to perpetrate fraud in the swap meet. Uh, that's an exchange of money and physical goods. Yeah, that's the one place where money can really be yeah. a thing, I guess. But not in the logbook. We really, you know, this this is a hobby. People do this for a <laughs> hobby. You're not you're not going to win a Nobel Prize for for DXCC, and and when when the certificate goes up on your wall, it's a personal achievement. It's an achievement that you've made and that you are proud of when you look at. And so, if you've obtained it by any other means, what's the point? Well, I always wonder that you know why hams cheat in contests and in working DX, and yet they do. So you know, it doesn't you know, bother you know. me. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't yeah. doesn't devalue the award that I have on my wall. Okay, but but if, so if you're gonna if you're gonna connect them, you you have to do your own verification at Logbook of the World. You have to join both, and and then you can connect them, and that sounds like a pretty good deal. To to, to be able to enter things in one place and have them appear in the other, uh, that's going to make things a lot easier. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty good. The, um, the the area of uh, of course the uh, the site that has always been near and dear to my heart is the amateur radio news, um, and you added apparently I noticed something uh, not too long ago called videos and podcasts, mm-hmm. um, and so it's a little confusing to me because I'd always entered my stuff in regular news, and after the approval, which usually was within well sometimes within an hour or so, sometimes twenty four, occasionally forty eight hours. You know, somebody was out of town. Um, and, and my announcement of the next Ham Radio Now show showed up, and then people started watching, because that's where people found out about it. Uh, why did you add the videos and podcasts, and now, because there's still, there aren't, well, first of all, there's not a lot of people looking at videos and podcasts yet. If you go, go look down there, you'll see that the view counts are in the... Uh, you know, a few go above 100, but most of them are in the sub-100. And if you look at the same thing, if you look at, uh, um, at, at the uh, the podcasts and videos that appear in the main news thread, and let's see if we've uh, if we've kicked out anybody or if there's, if there's some... Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing a podcast right now. Okay, well, there's Ham Talk Live. So uh, their show on, on the Bouvet D Expedition is 11,000, almost 500 people that have taken a look at that. So obviously the eyeballs are still at the main news page, and they're not at videos and podcasts. I would rather be in videos and podcasts because that's what I am, but I'm not going to go there and live if no one's going to watch me. What can we well, do? Well, I'll, I'll be frank about it. Uh, we get a lot of videos and podcasts submitted to us, and not all of them are of a quality that we would deem appropriate for the front page. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, and you, deservedly so. And uh, and so, so we didn't want to reject all of these videos because the, uh, most of them have good information. It's just that they may not be professionally produced or they may not be everything that they should be. And so we, I didn't want to toss them out. And so what we did was we created 
a section just for video and podcast, and actually it's taken off more so than I had imagined uh, in terms of the number of submissions to it. As far as the readership goes, uh, that's... I hadn't I hadn't studied the numbers the way you just did right there, but it, it's it's a valid point. Uh, but again, if if a video is is uh, trending and and very uh, interesting, uh, we're going to put it on the front page, and, and we we reserve the right to move that around to to get the best viewership. Okay, so so you, something could get get bumped up, mm-hmm. but you know people like people like me, and and a few of the other guys, we can still feel free to submit to the main news page. And as you say, if, if you deem that show is not uh, QRZ worthy on the main news page, you'll put it in the videos and podcasts. And that's, that's right. Where I'll have to go to live. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else um, about the site that we really ought to know that you, you wish people knew more about? Yes. Um, we've recently implemented within the last six months uh, a technology known as two factor authentication for user accounts. And a two-factor authentication is a way to positively secure your username and password so that no one can ever break into your account, no matter what. Has that been a problem? It has been a problem for for a, a percentage of our users. I would say it's a single-digit percentage, yeah. but enough it that has you, happened. Enough that you went through the effort to put in two-factor. That's right. So how does yours, uh, how does yours work? Uh, a, a text message or... Uh, we have text messages, yes, and we also have the, uh, the primary way you use it is to get the app on your phone, uh, the free app from Google that generates the passcode. Okay, so that's not the app that, that does call sign lookups. It's a, no, a separate, that's just a app. Google app. Because I use that all the time. Google Authenticator, it's called. Okay, so it's not a QRZ app. It's no. It's just Google Authenticator. Right, it's, you... it's open source uh, encryption. It's very strong. Okay, i uh, totally unaware of that. and, and prob- So that works... At a lot of two-factor sites, not just you, right? Everywhere. That that tool, that uh, Google tool, does work on Google and all the other two-factor sites. I thought, I thought I knew my phone. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> all right. So, um, it, it, you changed the login um, in general to something that I wasn't used to seeing, and that happened sometime, maybe, maybe last year, maybe even two years ago. Yeah, you know, my memory for for time and space is not very good, but the login did change some. Well, well, as as time goes on, technology changes, and 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 uh, technology gets more sophisticated, and the threats get more sophisticated as well. Uh, we simply don't believe in 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 sitting there and watching the grass grow. We, we we just we we try and keep up with it. And our engineer, by the way, I give a shout out to uh, Stephen McLaughlin, VA Seven STV. He's our engineer that's doing all the programming now and uh, very very a very very bright and energetic individual he's uh, about half my age <laughs> it's got a lot of horsepower there and uh, he's the one that's implemented our two-factor and uh, I'm very proud of it uh, putting a, a cat picture on your profile is a good way to become a featured member <laughs> well <laughs> You know, apparently it is now. You get to pick your picture, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I was a featured member at one time. That's not something I asked for; it just appeared. I didn't know because I hadn't logged on that day, and people were uh, sending me emails saying, "Gary, Gary, get on QRZ." It's uh, it's actually uh, every featured member is a QRZ subscriber, and what we do is we go through our entire list of subscribers one after the other every fifteen minutes. So in the course of an hour. Four people will be featured members, and so your picture will reappear. Okay. In, in about six weeks. Uh, okay. So it takes about that long, and you and you to cycle, run through the whole list. Yes. Cycle through everybody, and I imagine that's robotic. It's. You know, oh, absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I'm, I'm imagining a lot of the site is now robotic. That's right, except for customer support. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, Michael Coulter was talking about what was volunteer. What what is volunteer, and what is paid, and and. Uh, how big an operation is QRZ.com now? Uh, we recently moved into a 47-floor uh, office tower in downtown. No, wait a minute. <laughs> Actually, QRZ... You're in, you're in Trump Tower now. Oh, that's right. QRZ has no physical offices whatsoever. Uh, everyone works from home. There's there's four of us. And you uh, work from an RV. I, I don't anymore. I, I've, I've, uh, You've given up the RV? I've, hang, I've hung up my RV boots. Uh, we have... Uh, 
uh, Jamie Jeffries is my our daughter, uh, uh, KF7 WIS. She's the she's the CEO of QRZ. She runs the business. Uh, Stephen, as I mentioned before, VA7 STV. He's our engineering manager, programmer, and then uh, Todd uh, KG7 MAK is our is our paid su- staffer that does nothing but support all day long. He answers uh, uh, e- emails and uh, support requests, and uh, then there's myself. Uh, I'm I'm uh, pretty much just the, in the visionary position at this point, and my wife. Uh, You're the Steve Jobs. Uh, well. I don't know about that, but uh, and then my wife uh, helps me with that. So basically, there's five of us at QRZ, and uh, which is great for me because up and up for the first 15 years, I did the entire thing by myself. So I'm very happy now uh, to have this this help because it's it's actually grown the site as well. What is the visionary? What is on the horizon? That we're really, really concentrating on fine-tuning and polishing what we already have and making it available to more people uh, and bringing more internationalization uh, to the site as best we can. Uh, for those of you that do web programming, you, you must realize that supporting foreign character sets is not an easy thing to do, especially... Uh, on you know, so that it's visible by everyone. Yeah, and we Americans are going to be almost unaware of the need to do that because we're pretty insular in our language. But uh, I imagine this is something you discovered at some point. Well, they say you know, if you speak two languages, you're bilingual, and if you speak three, you're trilingual. But if you speak one, you're American. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid that's true. Um, so, you, but at some point, you learned that you had to accommodate the entire world. That's right. So, I was mean, that a long time ago? No, it was it. It happened fairly quick as soon as we went on the internet. In fact, right now half of our call sign, fully half of call signs on QRZ, are not from the United States, and that grows uh, by about a hundred call signs every single day. It's easy to get the uh, FCC database, and and you got all of that. Um, that. That's the way you started. It is, and the but the international database, it's not. There are no sources for the international database. All of the international data is submitted by the hams themselves. The good thing about that is that if that ham is active, that ham is probably on QRZ. It's just it's just a fact they of life. Want, they want to be known. Yeah. So um, of the um, let's talk domestic. I'm not sure if you got the statistic at hand, but of the uh, domestic hams that are all on there because of the FCC database, domestic U.S. Uh, how many have claimed their uh, existence on QRZ and entered some stuff in, in their profile? I, I don't know the number, but I would guess uh, probably half at least, uh, 350,000 or more. So would you um, would you guesstimate that, that, because everyone says, well, we've got 750,000 licensed TAMs and no one knows how many are active. Mm-hmm. Is it, would that be a good clue as to how many are at least, if not maybe active on the air, at least maintaining their interest in amateur radio? I suppose it, it would be a good indicator, yeah. Probably as good or better than any other source. Yeah, and, but I'll run into people I talk to on the air, and I'll go look up their call sign, and they haven't claimed it. So, Well, you know, QRZ has changed the way amateur radio works. People uh, uh, people are calling CQ, and the guy answering answering goes, Oh, hey, Jack, how you doing? Yeah, happens to me all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's it really has changed things. All right. So uh, in that visionary space, um, are you, you, you did a few videos a while ago, and I haven't seen one lately. They just not captured your interest? Uh, as far as uh, doing video production, I, I kind of, uh, I, I'm a, a very technically active person, and I, I jump from hobby to hobby fairly frequently. <laughs> uh, I was doing video. I bought a big video camera and played with that a while I got tired of it I bought a drone and I took drone video and got tired of that and uh, uh, but but every time I, I get a new toy as you might say I, I learn something from it and uh, that's just the way I am okay so um, you're happy to support the other shows and we are not expecting QRZ TV to show up anytime soon I don't think that's going to happen I do have the the I have a QRZ HD uh, logo that I put on some of my videos, <laughs> but it was just a, a, I had fun with uh, 
Adobe Premiere. Okay. You did an editorial recently. Um, I think it was about the uh, the, the ARL's um, Board of Directors Code of Conduct. Mm-hmm. Uh, editorials from Fred are rare. Yes, I, I, uh, I saw a lot of... I read a lot of other editorials about it first, and uh, I saw a lot of people... Uh, risk- Excuse us here. They're testing. Testing. Yeah, we can override them, but come up real close to the mic there. Yeah. So I read a lot of other people's opinions and uh, a lot of the user input, and it all seemed kind of foggy, and I just thought I would condense it down in sort of a what we know today. I, I was, it wasn't my um, uh, goal to, to try and steer the discussion or anything of that nature, but... Uh, I just wanted to make basically a summary of where things were at now. I have nothing but the utmost respect for the ARRL. I've been a member ever since I've been a ham, uh, which is uh, going on 30 years now. And uh, uh, I, I'm sure that whatever uh, whatever uh, kerfuffle is going on, it's, it's, it's just that. It's not really a big deal. Yeah, I don't, I don't know... The conspiracy theorist in me thinks that there's something, and I don't have a big conspiracy theorist in me, but it thinks that there's something a little more behind why they decided not to be transparent. And they, from from some things I've been hearing here at the Hamfest on background that I can't discuss too much yet, um, they have learned their lesson, at least to some extent. And we'll see how well they take that to heart and what real changes they made. But they've made some changes to the code of conduct already, and, and some more will be coming out. They, they definitely heard from the members on what was going on, and from a bunch of shows, or a, well, a few shows. Most of the shows didn't touch it. A few of the shows t- touched it a lot, but QRZ touched, touches everything. There's somebody out there, not necessarily you in an editorial, but somebody's making a comment about everything that's going on. It's the town square. Yeah. Well, that's what I, that was my goal uh, for, for putting up the QRZ News in the forums area, and uh, uh, that's the way it's supposed to work. Okay, so now let's talk about the trolls. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, take, I take pleasure in showing them the door. Uh. Well, you don't actually have trolls because everybody has to be identified. You're, you are, there's no, no hidden aliases there, right? Well, there are, there are people that are, that are surprisingly, uh, they feel free to voice their opinion no matter how stupid, you know, or ridiculous or outrageous. It, it's almost as if people are trying to outdo each other, you know, for entertainment's sake. Uh, I, I really don't engage in a great deal of discussion at all on myself personally because it just doesn't <laughs> interest me uh, that much. Yeah, but it, but it is it's it is life for some of the some of the members out there, and I'll put up a show that's got some controversy to it, or some that I don't think has very much controversy to it, and it'll get a dozen or two dozen replies, responses that are are um, have something to do with the subject, and of which maybe three or four of them have actually watched the program, and everyone else is going off of the headline or whatever I put in there, and then they start themselves a new show. Not a not an online show, but you know the the topic takes off and goes someplace else, and there's two, three, four, five people going to round robin for hundreds and hundreds of replies. You guys can email each other, you know. <laughs> yeah, thread poisoning, I think, is one of those things. And, is that what we call it? Uh, it's one of the things, or or just you know, uh, taking something off track. Um, yeah, it, it's it's all it's a problem with every form, though, not unique to QRZ by any means. So how heavily is it moderated? And because yeah, there's too much for anybody to actually sit there and watch. Somebody's got to complain before something gets caught. Well, we have volunteers just like every other uh, ham radio organization. We've got about a dozen at least volunteer moderators that uh, watch. And the other thing about hams is that well, right on the page, anyone can report a post saying you know there's something wrong with it, and, and we look at those constantly. So uh, it's it's self policing for the most part. Do you um, okay? Do you pay uh, your moderators uh, therapy sessions? <laughs> no, but we do give them a free subscription. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Fred Lloyd, AA7. Wait a minute. I need your picture up for that here. AA7BQ, the uh, founder, founder of QRZ. Is there a a better title for you? 
No, I'm good. I'm I'm founder of QRZ. I love it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming by. And uh, let's see. How many of these buttons can I push at once here? I am Gary Pierce, scan 4 eq Ham Radio Now is brought to you by you. If you enjoy the program, stop by hamradionow.tv, click the pig, send us some money. And uh, subscribe to qrz.com and join as a... Uh, uh, as a uh, subscription member and uh, send, send uh, I forgot what buttons to push here. Send Fred some money, too. Thank, every, you. Thank every, you, Gary. Everybody uh, has got their hand in your pocket. All right. Uh, that is it for this episode. Goodbye, Facebook. Over and out. <laughs> <laughs>